All right. Hello again. Uh, So anyway, I was just going to say, uh, hopefully you guys have had a good day so far. There's been a lot of really cool panels. Uh, I think uh, Tony uh, Z's last one was pretty cool. It's showing you how we're going to have a very dynamic uh, universe on a high level. Uh, so, uh, and obviously the stuff we had with the various things like the Planet Tech V4, ships, characters, UI. So hopefully you guys got to see some of that. And the marketplace was great. You guys are always great. Uh, and, um, well, this is the end. Uh, so hopefully we've got something special for the end for you guys. Uh, so last year, at the end of CitizenCon, uh, I had the sort of road to release roadmap. Uh, and, uh, you know, as of last year, we said, well, we've achieved seven of those 12 uh, that we'd um, set out to do, starting with the hangar and going all the way to, uh, you know, location persistence and planet tech. Uh, but, you know, since then, uh, we delivered the OCS and band culling at the end of last year, which I think made a big difference on the client performance. Uh, and, you know, we've got a few things that we're doing this year. So, if I go. So, we've showed it, but um, uh, Planet Tech 3.5 is what we did last year. Sorry, I'm behind on the... Can I not get this up here? Otherwise, I'm going to have to look up here. I'm going to forget about it. Uh, <laughs> So we had ship purchases, ship rentals, which is actually quite cool because you don't have to buy with cash any other ships. You can rent or purchase them with the money you're earning in the game. Um, and we've also been shifting to quality of life, staggered development, uh, which is, you saw a little bit of that in Alpha 3.7. We're more serious about that. So we've moved the teams to six-month cycles. We're still delivering patches every three months, but the teams themselves get six months to work on their features or their content that will go into whatever patch they're sort of designated for. And I think it gives them more time to do good work and iterate and give you a better experience. And we're slowly working on aspects of the gameplay, you know, in terms of, say, the feel of flight or the feel of combat. Uh, we're doing things like, you know, Sean was showing the sort of theaters of war where we're, it's a, you know, that's a, that's a good sort of contained uh, mode that will allow us to sort of fine tune what's really cool about Star Citizen, which is sort of the mixed arms, uh, the ability to you know, be on the ground or in a vehicle or up in space. Uh, and so we are increasing our focus to make sure that the game experience now is, you know, 3.7 I think is probably our most stable uh, release today. <clears throat> but the game experience now is good and then is just improving as we go on. Um, so this is what's coming up next. So in 3.8, we are going to have the very first iteration of server-side OCS. So, so, and, and, and you guys didn't know it because we didn't want to spoil the thing, but the demo we, we ran this morning was running it, and this, what we're running right now, is running SOPS, and you'll understand why it's important as we get into the demo. Uh, assuming it doesn't crash, which, you know, you never know. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, to let you know, so, the, so it's the first iteration of the server-side OCS. So we have, uh, like, server persistence in the session of the server. So the server, whenever it, uh, you know, it leaves an area, it streams stuff out, it remembers the state of all the items and all the stuff that was there at that time. But it won't, it doesn't persist beyond the server session. The bigger thing, which we've talked about in the future, is sort of the iCache, which is the full persistence. Uh, so platform persistence is one other thing that we're putting in the 3.8, which is what was, is basically a halfway house to the very full persistence. But the platform persistence is going to allow us to save off the alpha UEC that you've earned. Also, any items or ships that you've bought or rented in the game are going to... So, they're going to get saved off to the platform in the same way that we record all your um, shop cash purchases. And so when a new release comes, we can re-entitle it back to the account in the same way we do for everything that you do. And the, the plan with that is to not have to wipe between uh, 
you know, iterative releases on a major release, and potentially even from one release to the next. And you know, we do reserve the right if there's like a major issue or a major rebalance, or we have to redo the database on a, a major release, then at that particular time, we may have to wipe it. But in general, the goal is to let you guys make money in the game, earn things, collect things, and not have it wiped every time we do a new release. So, so we're, and, and so we're aiming to ship that with that will hopefully be that should be with the 3.8 patch cycle, uh, and now uh, Planet Tech V4, which we obviously sort of unveiled at the beginning, and there was some really cool panels about it during the day, uh, which I think is going to, I mean, just the quality of, the, I mean, not just Microtech, but going back to the old places like Daymar or Salon is whole new <laughs> whole new world. Um, you know, one of the focuses we've got upcoming too, which is which we not particularly managed to show well this morning, uh, is the social group gameplay. But that is a focus for us to make sure that the VoIP and the VoIP and the group gameplay stuff works well. It's important for us to get stuff working for you know, as uh, Sean mentioned, for the theaters of war. But just in general, playing, grouping up with your friends in the universe, doing stuff, uh, and so that is a focus. And you'll see us iterating on that. Uh, for 3.8, uh, 3.9, and onwards. Uh, you know, more robust missions. So we've got uh, some stuff coming up in 3.8 that, uh, you know, is interesting. There's, you know, we're starting to introduce AI into some of the missions, like, say, the rescue the hostage on the 890, which we had in an ATV. We were showing a very early version of it uh, uh, that it will be in 3.8, and there'll be some other ones along that line uh, of missions, and that's multi-part missions, which also what we're showing is sort of an early version of a multi-part mission, what we showed beginning and we're going to end with here, uh, that 3940 onwards. Uh, then uh, sometime uh, around about middle of this year, I think, uh, so full universe persistence. And that is the persistence that allows us to save everything, period. So you can take your coffee mug that you've got in the Carrick, and explore on a planet, and drop it in a forest, get back on your Carrick, fly away, and someone else could go to that forest and see this, that coffee mug, or you could come back and see it if someone else hasn't stolen it. Uh, and so the, 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 <laughs> and that, that, that iterates to every, every, uh, every, every dynamic item in the game gets saved off, so basically, we save the state, it goes back to a cloud database. It's what we're calling the iCache. Uh, of course, there'll be some stuff like, you know, not, you know I, we, we want to be smart where like, people can't like, stack a 1,000 turtles in a place. So obviously, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have some policies on the items. So at some point, when we're saving it to the database, we'll say, well, this is a low importance item. There's too many in this area. Uh, so therefore, and this one's been around too long, so we just won't bother saving that to the database. And then you'll just sort of be like, oh, you know, someone came along while you weren't there and uh, took the turtle or cleaned it up. Uh, but in general, uh, you know, you it, so the permanent structures. So one thing that gives us is the ability for you as players to go around the universe and ultimately, you know, you want to create your own base somewhere, create your own homestead. You should be able to settle down and put a base there, and it will be recorded back to the iCache, and you can come back to it, and it will be there, and it, it will persist. Uh, and so I think the opportunity for emergent gameplay that comes from that is going to be fantastic. Because as you saw with what Tony was doing in his presentation before, we're going to have dynamic resources in the universe. We're also going to persist those. So they'll be finite, so there'll be only so much you know, gold or hadonite or whatever it is on various moons or planets. And as they get mined out, then you'll have to find some other place and move to it. And there's an especially rich seam. I can see a group of players coming, setting up camp there, and starting to mine the resources. And then I can see some other groups saying, oh, well, that, that's great. I want some of that. They show up, and you, know, you basically have two groups battling out. And then there's a whole business that's going to be involved in you know, supplying more weapons or logistics or healing people or bringing you know, uh, consumables that people need. So I, I think. There's going to be this like dynamic, evolving uh, system that will be incredibly interesting, and compelling, and I'm really looking forward to that. And that's 
enabled by the full universe persistence, which is, like I said, the full persistence of all items, ships, characters, and also persistent tracking of the resources. Um, and then the last thing, uh, which uh, we won't, I think, get to by the end of next year, but we'll be very close to it, is server meshing. And so everything we've been doing up until then, and that's when I think everything fully comes alive, is the server meshing allows us to have a lot more players in the same area. But the, the work that we've done on the uh, kind of server-side OCS, where you can change the point of view of the server arbitrarily anywhere around uh, and save off state is, is exactly what you need for server meshing. Because what happens in a server, if more people arrive, say, I don't know, in New Babbage, and you suddenly go, oh, you know, we can only run 100 people or 200 people or whatever the number we can simulate on the server, uh, and there's now 201 people, you say, OK, I'm going to spin up a second, second server. Here's another view onto New Babbage, and these players are on that. And you just keep on spinning up more to take on the load in areas. And, and so that's why we needed the server OCS and the bank calling and the full persistence, and it enables server meshing. So that's the next thing. Once we deliver the full persistence, we're actually already starting to work on the network side of what we need for the server meshing right now. But um, we're really excited about that, because then that's going to allow a sort of dynamic, seamless uh, universe that won't have the same player count restrictions. Uh, and by the way, we'll also, with we don't know quite with server OCS what we'll be able to do, but we're going to start experimenting with some player counts in the future and maybe upping it. Because at the end of the day, if we're not simulating the whole system, and it's a, a smaller subset of that, we'll be able to have more players. So, so we'll see in the midterm if we can get more players into a server right now. But longer term, server meshing is what's going to allow us to really have a fully dynamic universe. Uh, and then on the smaller things that we're going to be working on is obviously, <clears throat> you know, I've talked about the quality of life. It's an ongoing uh, effort for us. You're only starting to see the very, very beginnings of it. Uh, so we have some dedicated teams that just focus on the quality of life. We have a very, what we call the vehicle experience team that we're working on things to improve how it feels operating and, and running a vehicle. Uh, I mentioned that there was a couple of things like the look ahead, some small stuff that we showed in, in the opening. But there's a lot more stuff to come, and also in terms of you know, the feel of combat and all the rest of the stuff. Uh, we're going to be adding, uh, obviously, more loops. I think next up, we've got uh, uh, sort of fueling, refueling, fuel collection. Uh, then it'll be salvage, more content, obviously. And then open up a bit. We'll see what happens. Uh, all right. So uh, now we've done that, we're going to head into our demo. But at first, let's just recap uh, and, and uh, get a Todd Pappy up here with me, wherever he is. Hello, Pappy. Come on. There we go. <laughs> All right. So just in any good TV show, So we're on uh, the Microtech shuttle to the lab. Can we get the quadrant? All right. And by the way, Glenn is uh, actually on an AI-flown ship here. So, and that is something longer term that we're, we're going to be working on, which is AI doing things like taking your shuttle from a space station down to the ground, or various locations that you could go to without having to fly to yourself. So think of it as a bigger version of the transit system.
And here's one of the things that, the, you know, I think Ian's talked about, we've talked about is that we want to increase our range of, you know, we have outposts, but they're pretty Correct. small. And we want to have points of interest that you would have in various planets or moons yeah. that you can have mission content in, things to do. Uh, and this is sort of an iterate, this is a sort of first prototype of that. Yeah, so, so um, basically multiple entries, multiple exits. Um, obviously with outposts, you got one way in, one way out. Uh, so for us, um, from a design standpoint, you know, this allows us to build these in a modular way so that we can have different entrances, different exits, different room layouts, different mission content associated with it. Uh, from there, you know, then we start looking towards towns and villages. And then obviously we have our, our main cities. Yeah, and, and as I mentioned earlier, this is sort of a prototype first version of a sort of multi-part mission uh, that we discussed and yeah. thinking about doing uh, in the longer term, not 3.8 obviously, but 3.9 or on beyond that. Of course, it's cold here in Microtech. Hi. So you'll see, now that we've entered into the room, the the temperature that the character feels changes and he actually starts returning back to normal. So hopefully our, our trusty ID card still works. Willing to say it does. <laughs> and we take a look out the side, Glenn, out the window a bit. When you uh, out the window out here. So one other thing, which we're going to get into a little further, but if we actually take a look outside. Um, so uh, the other thing that we're showing here is dynamic weather. Yes. Uh, and so actually, there is a uh, a ground snowstorm blowing in. Can you look out the window a little yes, bit, Glenn? Oh, Glenn. Glenn, can you look at the window? So if you take a look, if we go take a look out here, it's where the trees go to the left a little bit. Yeah, so you can see. So, all right, we carry on. So there's a storm blowing in right now. Come to that in a, a bit better. But uh, the weather's okay. in. The, we the weather simulation uh, takes into account uh, the humidity, yes. the wind, uh, temperature. Yes, right? all of that. And, and it and is dynamic, so it's set up. So not going to have, we've got a couple elements still to come on the fully, fully dynamic planetary weather, uh, which would be volumetric uh, planetary crowds and uh, volumetric ground fog. We have a large amount of the pieces in place uh, for our weather sims, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but let's carry on with our, our mission. So we're gonna, so we're gonna go look for the uh, data center to try and steal the algorithm. So it, it says it in the, the demo, or basically in the um, mission briefing, that you're looking for server number five. So we'll we'll be looking around and getting closer and working our way over there. Try not to be too conspicuous. <laughs> And the idea with these kind of missions in the longer term is to you know, have the ability to do like stealth gameplay, exactly. combat gameplay, so, uh, solve some puzzles. Yes. So it's not just going to be about shooting people all the time. Well, uh, and it's something that Tony and you and I have talked about a long time yeah. ago, which is basically breadcrumbs as well. So it yeah. opens up to other aspects. So we want a sort of combination of sort of the procedural dynamic stuff that would be yes. generated by the universe simulation that Tony was showing earlier 
plus some more crafted, multi-stage, kind of more narrative missions, yes. and they all get mixed in to give you a, a really sort of nice flavor and variety of things to do. So, like, we need to figure out a good way. We're going to show, we, we kind of know a good way, yeah. but as a game player, you would actually have to suss this out. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go back here in the maintenance area. Great. In the future, obviously, the AI will have certain stims that they can react to, um, and you know, audio is one of them. Having certain objects that the pl player places around would be another way to distract AI. Again, there was things like we took the, uh, Glenn's going to take his uh, paw, there's the like locks on the yeah. multi-tool, and uh, we can pretend we're going to pour them off, or not. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, this is, the idea is, you know, like the, the FPS, like the, the multi-tool has different modes, cutting, could welding. be mining, yeah. could be welding, repairing. Yeah. In this particular case, we're just going to cut the four. Um, kind of hinges locks off so we can take the grey open and get through it. And again, this is, you know, I think we've talked a little bit about, you know, especially with something like whether the weather or the temperature, it's about taking, like, the physical inventory, taking the things you need. Taking so the right do I need a tool to go and do something? Do I need to have uh, an outfit that will keep me warm or, Correct. or you know, protect me from fire? And I mean, I think w even with our combat and everything like that, we want people to actually think about what they need to do first. Are you, are you looking for the exit? No, he's looking how to turn that off. No, 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 you, it's on the bottom here. Go down here, there. See that square? Move your cursor down. Oh, can you tap to it? Your mouse isn't working? Yeah. I. Yeah, I. All right, Glenn's managed to crash. That can't be right, right? Come out, do that, that's one way. There we okay, go. well done. So, that, the, that's the, you know, the, as you guys know, there's an inventory, there's a personal inner thought system, yes. which is, uh, Richard, is the personal inner thought with 3.8 or 3.9? 3.9. 3.9. So, so, yeah, that's sort of work in progress. But the personal inner thought is in 3.9, which allows you to access a whole bunch of uh, sort of uh, actions or interactions that are sort of on you or would be your thoughts. Uh, and so that's a very early version that obviously for some reason is bugged, but we weren't actually meant to end up triggering that. So we're looking for a, a data card. We're going to steal. Bill. There's a guard on that side. So make sure you well, stay out of that way, Glenn. There you go. Okay. There we go. Take the data card. You can take that one, or I think he's going to... He clocked one on the desk, I think. Okay. Quick. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. Go. And maybe under here to get the other side. And 
By the way, one of the reasons why, oh, yeah, there we go. One of the reasons, obviously, why Microtech, they like this planet and it being cold is to essentially cool all their, uh, the, know, the server systems, farms? The server farms, yeah. Yes. It's like a big Microsoft. All right, let's, uh, let's try to get some data. And again, this is building block UI, right? Yes. So yes. that's all put together by a designer fairly quickly without having to have flash programmers or... Get out of here with our ill-gotten gains. Oops. Can't really go that way. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh All right. Ooh. All right, Glenn. Just pretend that you're blending in. Uh. Okay. You mind telling us what the hell is going on? Hey, talking to you. Jeez, <laughs> that was close. <laughs> you know, let's put it on top of his. Okay. Oops, a daisy. I think we better get out of here, Glenn. Yeah. So uh, we have non-lethal takedowns now. Yeah, let's get yeah. out. Yeah, it's part of that. Yeah. So melee combat does shift yes. 3.8. Yes. And it's a lot more than just that. But it's non-lethal takedowns. You'll be able to fight. To, to knock people out. Knock people out. Yeah. Um, get into uh, fisticuffs. fisticuffs. There's a whole sort of different levels of punch, left, right, block, left, right. It's all actually physically made. Uh, so we've grabbed something kind of warm, but we're not really ready to it. We've actually stashed uh, a getaway yeah. environment suit. And Richard, uh, try uh, I want to bring up to the stage. So Richard's uh, the lead designer on our actor feature team. And I'd like him to talk a little about what is happening right here. And the beginning of the actor status system that will ship in 3.9. So what you're seeing here is basically an extension of the room system. And the room system contains temperature, wind speed, humidity, and it basically amalgamates all of that into what you're seeing on the HUD at the moment, which is the apparent temperature. So the apparent temperature actually comes in 
and it's part of our player status system. And the player status system is where you start to feel these environments and the actual environments start to play into the gameplay. So you can see here that actually the physicalized wind, he's actually leaning into the wind. He's putting his hand up to try and shield himself, but he's not wearing the correct attire. So he's not wearing the correct equipment because he's just basically grabbed the clothes and jumped outside. And as you can see, it's really cold. So he's starting to yeah, shiver. A bomb side here, it is. Yeah, it's like minus, uh, minus 120 degrees Celsius. So obviously, you can only survive at like at least two, three minutes in that temperature. So he's actually starting to undergo hypothermia, which is part of our status effects. And hypothermia actually ties into the gameplay. So his heart starts to raise, his stamina starts to decrease, he starts to actually physically start to see his, the, the, you'll see a whiteout, so he starts to become more sensitive to the light, and his audio will start to come in as well, to actually really sell that your body is shutting down. And the player status system really, it just incorporates multiple different things. So hypothermia is part of the temperature gameplay, and you're seeing the cold aspect here, but eventually that will be for heat as well as other active status as well. But you can see here he's starting to see the other value on here that you see is the apparent temperature, but the other value is the body temperature. Now the body temperature is tracking your internal body. So, and I think, it's, what is it down by now? It's like yeah. down at like minus, no, 33 we, degrees Celsius. We forgot Celsius. to put the drop shadow on the, yeah. the thing. And so we're not in this suit. We actually have a suit that we stashed in the cave, which we're looking for. The other thing uh, that you may have noticed if, when Glenn was going to the third person view, uh, but we have, uh, we're working on environmental shader effects. So there is actually, there was snow accumulation on the jacket that he wore. You notice, if you go back and look at what it was when he got it and what it is now. Uh, and with that accumulation is meant to be for things like snow, rain, dust, dirt, uh, and that's something that we're looking to have in in 3.9. And so that, really that, that depends the on the biome, the, the basically your environment. So, yes. and it'll build up over time. Build up. So we better get a warm suit on because otherwise we're gonna essentially pass out. And so then die. this suit is actually cold. So hopefully, when Glenn puts it on, you'll see actually that the, it's actually frosted. So you can see your actor's actually shivering here as he's putting it on. And this suit is is more as the Caldera suit that we revealed in the character archetype talk. And this is a, an environment suit that's built for these extreme climates. He's really cold. He's really cold. So you'll see the visors frosted and up. You can see, and it'll this is like getting into your car when it's frozen. It's, it's frozen and you've, the visor's actually frosted up. Your suit's frosted up. And as your suit kicks in, this suit has an operating range that can actually survive these temperatures. So yeah, and if we go, yeah, and, and you'll see it now because the same effects that we saw on the windshield, you definitely see. Yeah, so in, think of it like uh, your car. So a visor, you, you're going to see because it's a big snow, winter storm, snow, slush that's going to, that's warm in here as it's going out though, it's going to start to get slush. And what we're going to see is uh, less art, is tough. And then I think the other person that I'd like to bring up is Mike Snowden, who's the director of our visual effects, and his team is being responsible for all the environmental weather effects here. And this is what we're doing on the snow side, but it, it's same could work in, you know, a desert planet for dust, rain, and we've actually prototyped a lot of this stuff outside snow, but you're seeing the snow has been our, uh, thing, uh, our first example. So That's I don't know if you want right. to talk about some of the stuff. Yeah, I mean, so this is all, the, the main thing about these effects is they're completely uh, data-driven. So we put a lot of time into creating these rule sets. The, the way that we offer the effects is completely different to anything we've done before, because we know that we can make beautiful looking storm effects, but the really cool thing about this, no pun intended, is that it, it's literally the data that the planet gives us, so this ties in with the Planet Tech V4, yeah. which obviously we're, we're showing off today. Uh, it ties in with all the active status stuff, so it's like bringing everything together. So it, it, they look fantastic, but they're completely driven by what the game data is. Yeah, the temperature, altitude, humidity, yep, yep, yep. Uh, and and so it's systemic and it's yep. I mean, and the, it'll be affected by time of day and other things. Absolutely, so yeah. Great. I mean, so the rule sets are things like temperature, even elevation, wind strength, wind direction, even angle. There's a lot of complexity in the rule set that makes it really easy actually for us in the long term to, to make these yeah. effects across all the kind of hundreds of planets that will eventually yeah, be, be, be exactly. created. And, you know, obviously you can see the effect of the winds on the 
vegetation. Yep. Yep. So, and as you see here, we're in fog, you see the snow, our visor is getting, you know, it's like you would be, you know, in a snowstorm. You're Absolutely. Skiing yeah. or out there. Yeah. So we, 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 we stashed a suit. We actually had a rover that we've stashed yeah. those in our carrack. So, so um, we're looking uh, for what, right now. One of the things before we go on too far, the other thing is with the armors, you will run into planets that are outside your temperature range. And uh, so you might last there for 15 minutes, but obviously we want to make sure that it's very lucrative for you to be able to you know, go in there and, and risk reward uh, gameplay for it. Yeah, so be equipped. That's why you would have a big ship yeah. and, and buy different armor and store it. Okay, so here's our rover, uh, which we've hidden with a little top. And uh, this is going to be a much more larger example of the, the cloth class interaction yeah. system. So, all right, Glenn, let's get the top off and get into the rover. Okay, we can drop it now. <laughs> And again, that's an example of all the physics stuff coming together, the yeah. cloth interacting, the wind blowing it. Uh... And the wind itself here, uh, one thing I wanted to call out is that the wind is different strengths depending on where you are. So if you're down in the tree line or in the troughs, the wind is actually is a lot slower. And then as you get more exposed, that wind comes out. So it really is a dynamic, dynamic environment. And as you see, as we get into here now, the temperatures come up, the water the water's evaporating from our visor and we have a clearer view. But of course, the outside of the, the, the rover now will have the effect on its canopy. All right, let's let, let's let um, Sam know that she needs to pick us up. Welcome to Public Space Industries. Enjoy the ride. System check. This isn't going to work because of the go-to setup. Because the go-to's break the, the dog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need a pickup. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, hello. Yep, I'm going to need a pickup down the bottom of the hill. On my way. Okay. All right, get it. We actually, the, the, that breaks in our system because we, we have a little background well, it's zoomed to the right place, which doesn't, doesn't actually do the server it has a stream, check yeah. right. So yeah. it has streamed, and it, it's actually, you are seeing some of the stuff because this is in server OCS, so we don't have everything all the time now. So when things go in and out, we still got edge cases, and that's one of the issues that we're, we have to fix before server OCS happens, but it'll be fine. Also, this is precarious, so make sure you get a little yeah. noisy for Glenn. Oh. oh. All right. Oh. See the fog starting to thin out now as we're going further down. That's part yeah, of the yeah. So again. Like as we're further down, it's not quite as thick. The the, the, uh, the weather is not quite as intense. I, I know. It's shit out of me. Show off, Glenn. Hey.
Good job, Glenn. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when it was almost impossible to get a rotor yeah. into a ship, but now we can do it. Yeah. It's great. And here's an example of, so we're talking about storage. Uh, so these are actually meant to be for suit storage. Still kind of early days and stuff, so it's a bit wonky, but we put our suit in there, we need it. So the idea is that you would have suits and stuff that you would store depending on what you would need uh, on different planets. that and I think someone's shooting us from behind hey I got a pretty hefty crime start we're gonna have to get out of here we're being tailed get to the turret So this is our, our first iteration of ship AI in, in atmosphere. atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. So we are being tailed by Microtech security because they figured out that we've stolen the data and yeah. we're making a getaway. There we go. All right, come on. To our little turret. Okay, come on, let's get rid of it. Hey, Sam, here. why don't you bank? All right, one more. Okay, come on, let's get him. Okay, last one. Okay, we got one more, right? Was that all of them? No, nope. there's one more. Here he is. Okay. Sam's basically flying the ship to try and give Glenn a good shot. All right. Oh, get him. Come on, Glenn. Probably not. You got to do it. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, you can actually see a snowstorm in the distance there in the background as we're leaving. That was where we came from. Do we have what? <laughs> yeah, I can punch it. Okay, come on, Glenn. No pressure. Joe, take him out. Shoot it, shoot it. Okay, Glenn, come on. Ooh. 
Did it take us this long? I don't know. On Glenn. Come on, Glenn. There we yeah. go. Hey! Woo! So why don't we get out of here, Sam? <laughs> Here we had our mission update. Uh, we get it later. Okay. Let's get out of orbit then. Ah. <laughs> oh, it's kind of, it, it, when we ran these run-throughs, it, it did not take. That was the no. longest it's taken. Yeah. I, I it was, uh, was a bit nervous on that one. You do a sideways, Glenn. It's kind of cool too. Just, just go to the sort of side and around. Yeah, like the side. Glenn. Yeah, side. He's got, he's got it. He, he, yeah. he heard me. Yeah. See the view. This microtech's very pretty. All right. <laughs> when do we get the mission update? Oh, my key too? Okay. Yeah, you can see that fight. Those are trees down there, those dots. That's, that's cool. So is, uh, okay, so now we're going to QT, right? Okay, let's get it. Let's get going. She's having trouble with the HUD. With the what? She's having trouble with the HUD. Uh, okay. Just get up, get up, and then... Yeah, once no, no, I get out of atmosphere, it should yeah. help. I hope. It says flight system's damaged. <laughs> right, but the... Ah, yeah. The attenuated panel. Oh, what's happened on that one? Sam, can you hit B and do it? Mm? Can you hit B and do it? Yeah, I think I can find it with B, hopefully. It was a square marker, wasn't it? Uh, hmm. Hey. Hey. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know so I, 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 fucking, we I, don't, a, I don't know what happened. Na we gotta get the nav. Yeah. nav I just fucking that whole thing drives me nuts. Okay. We have the mission now to go to Paris. It should be. It should be coming. So when's it come? You don't need to rush, by the way, Glenn. Hey, Glenn, can you check your um, mission status? You should have had the, mission, the update for where they were. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw it. Yeah, delivered to Ruin Station. There you go. So 
the to yeah, I told we had the update of the mission. I guess we just missed yeah. it. Anyway, we got we got we got the data. We've now told where we got to go. We got to get a rune station in. There we go. So here we go. Go go exterior, Glenn. Exterior. There you go. Show it off. There you go. And this is in the uh, volumetric cloud, the yes. space cloud tech that we have. Same stuff that we're using for Squadron 42 for the coil. But as uh, as you can see, use of, usable everywhere else. It's completely volumetric yeah. layer, and it's beautiful. Okay. And here we're, so we're at the jump point um, to uh, the pyro system. Now, you don't necessarily need infrastructure for jump points, but the more traveled ones are the ones that used to be traveled, which Pyro used to be, but not, not particularly anymore, have uh, what we call jump rings around them, and they help stabilize the jump point to make for a smoother jump. If you don't have one, then it's more difficult, and the entrance is harder or difficult. But sometimes you may want to try a sort of side jump point to get into a system, like if you're a smuggler, because the main ones would be more, uh, you know, essentially, they are like a checkpoint. It's like going through a border a port. patrol or it, something. It, it, it is basically a port. So when we're building the solar system, one of the things that we think about are our entrances for, um, obviously, economy reasons. And you saw that with Tony Z's talk of way to interject new things into the solar system. Um, so around, a, around the Stanton jump points, the three major ones, uh, we will have uh, space stations, you know, so that you can go and travel. And let's say you had a long jump point and Want to stop and stop and uh, basically drop something off there? You or can. refuel, or refuel, or, yeah, exactly. or do whatever you need to do. Um, so we will have space stations around those jump points that you can go and interact with. Now, obviously, when you're going to a little bit more lawless system, uh, I don't want to say like building a wall. But yeah, yeah. Well, in the case of Pyro, it used to be a uh, regulated system. Yes. That's that, that once they strip mined it out, no one goes there anymore and it's fallen uh, sort of into a lawless state. Yes. And uh, so this is not really a well, this isn't a very tr often traveled uh, uh, jump point, but we're going to take it because that's where we have to go to uh, head to Paris Station. So as you can see, the uh, jump ring, which is de delineating where the point is off in the distance, and uh, Sam is going to line itself up um, for us to jump to Pyro system. And this is it. this is essentially sort of the infrastructure you occasionally would you know you can have around. You can, some places would have bigger stations, uh, but as I said, the Pyro route isn't a very particularly well traveled one. But also with this, I guess with the cloud tech, you see the possibilities of us going in and mining that, um, and then it f affecting your radar, it being booby trapped, all these kind of gameplay possibilities, I feel open up um, with these unique points of interest. Uh, do you guys think we should open it? Yes. I think we should go. Yeah. Let's do it.
So going through a wormhole is a little bit like riding the rapids. <laughs> you don't really have much. Uh, you have la lateral control. But it's, it's being on a current. You're being pushed on a current. Yeah. And you've got to keep inside uh, the boundaries of the wormhole. And actually, if Sam gets a little close, you'll sort of see interference on his screens. And of course, Stanton's just going away in the background, and Perez coming in here. Yeah, and, and you can see there's actually a current that we put in the in the w wormholes, and you sort of see the particles that are giving you the idea of where the center line current is. And you have to anticipate to keep on the course because if you don't. You go off and you go into the boundaries of the wormhole, you could end up just being spat out in just space in the middle of nowhere or severely damaged. Oh. Ah. Go around, 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 Glenn. Okay, so we are now in the Pyro system, and we streamed out Stanton while we were, while as we were traveling, and streamed in Pyro. The the other side, by the way, has got an awesome yeah. fly on the side, yeah. Sam, Sam. Set a route to, to, to the ruin station, Sam. Mm -hmm. There we oh, go. There we go. <laughs> hmm. All right, Ian. Hit it. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. We made it. No crashes. Woohoo! Close one. Close one on the on the on the interaction. Good job. Yeah. Good job, guys. Good job, Mike. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, hang on a sec. I think it's. I get another. There should be a slide that we go to. Not a ship. A slide. Come on. What's the slide? <laughs> There you go. Anyway, so in this coming year, um, we were sort of showing you what we're going to do. So we are going to have the pyro system next year. Uh, obviously, uh, that brings in jump points. We're going to have dynamic weather. Uh, you were going to be, you know, Microtech, you're going to get uh, the planet itself in uh, 3.8. Uh, but uh, we'll be opening up new Babbage in 3.9. We've got moons of Microtech that come in, I think, in 3.9 too. Uh, and we'll be continuing on the uh, development of socks and the eye cache and the persistence, and it's pretty damn exciting. I'm really, it's kind of coming together, and at the detail that I didn't think anyone thought would be possible. So, uh, I, you know, hopefully you guys liked it. So, so I'd like to give a big shout out to uh, you know everyone on stage that's helped with the demo here. You know, Glenn and Simon, Joe and Rob are backstage somewhere. Thank you very much. Uh, they did a great job. Todd, Mike, Richard, John, who I didn't pull up. He got lucky. He didn't have to go in front of people. Jared over there. Um, also. Oh, we got, I think there's about 200 developers or so here from the, Man the mostly the Manchester, but some the German office, some the Austin office, some the LA office. So thank you, I mean, to all the developers, because I can stand up here and you guys all clap and it's nice for me, but really I'm not doing all this stuff. There's a lot of really talented developers that do everything that you've been seeing here, seeing uh, during the day. 
and they've worked really hard, and I think things like Citizen Con are one of the coolest things. So they get to come, they get to meet all you guys, they get to interact with people that are appreciating the work they're doing. Uh, so uh, it's good, and I want to say thank you to all our developers because they work really, really hard and do a great job. And then, and then we also have, uh, you know, obviously the event staff and the volunteers have done an amazing job with this Citizen Con. I mean, wandering around, it's yeah, it's brilliant. I mean. Going back to the very first ones and to what we are now, it's amazing. Uh, but you know, thank you to everyone that's put the show together. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know what Leia is, but there she was producing it. But she did an amazing job. David Roth, he did an amazing job. Uh, and everyone that did it on the support side. To everyone on our operations, support, marketing, thank you for CG. And then you guys, thank you so much for supporting this crazy dream <laughs> that's getting a little more real every day. Uh, thank you, really, totally. So everyone out there on the internet, everyone here, uh, you know, we couldn't be here. We wouldn't be getting to do this amazing stuff without your guys' support, so we really appreciate it. And uh, so, yeah, I am very thankful. And I guess we talked about maybe, do you want to see the carrot commercial one last time or something? Yeah. And then we get some drinks, and I'll be there and sign things, and OK. All right, let's do the carrot commercial, and thank you, thank you very much, everybody. My father always used to say I had wanderer's legs. We all wonder what's out there. But for me, it was more than that. A stranger in my own world, I set out to find my path. Through all my travels, through all the trials of the unknown, I came to realize that there was really only one thing I'd been looking for. A place to call home.